Sharon, thank you for talking to Living Down Under. So tell me a little bit about yourself and how come you're here on the Gold Coast now. Well, I migrated from Melbourne, <laughs> not from overseas. And one of the main reasons was actually weather yeah. and change of lifestyle, just to get away from the pace of Melbourne and a broken heart. So needed to um, just flee and everybody loves the Gold Coast. So I spent every single holiday, annual holiday with the family here since I think I was about six or seven years old. So we knew the Gold Coast as a tourist destination. and. Having been here for 25 years, it's certainly an excellent place to live. We still love Melbourne, but I just can't stand the cold weather. Yeah, and you get back to Melbourne quite frequently. Then. I do, I certainly do. Yeah. yeah. But together with um, moving geographically, I also had a complete change of, um, of career. In 89, I think it was, I started my law degree. Migration law wasn't even an elective at university, mm -hmm. so when I completed the degree and was working with a law firm, um, migration law was just an area of practice that they had. And so I fell into it by mistake yeah. and uh, haven't looked back. I love it, absolutely love it. Yeah. Mm. So tell me how you can help people. This is, this is a big decision for anybody that wants to migrate to Australia or to any country. As we say to our members, it's not the sort of thing people wake up one morning and say, ah, we'll go to Australia today. You know, we've decided we've had enough of England or China or Russia. It's a long-term decision. Migration consultants, migration advisors, migration lawyers, they're all the same. The, yeah. the technical term is registered migration agents yeah. and the most important aspect of that is registered. Um, obviously, the legislation, the policy, the procedures with the Department of Immigration and Citizenship are really detailed. Um, they're constantly changing yeah. and unfortunately these days under this government we don't get too much notice of changes. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very, very difficult for the public to know what these are options they might yeah. have or even if they think they know of their option, how to actually go through the procedures. And that's where the migration advisors can certainly come in. I think that the most important aspect is first to know whether, you, whether a person actually has an option. Yeah, whether they've got absolutely. particular visa um, opportunities. At the moment, I'd probably like to make comment on Australia at this, at this present time and certainly the government at this present time. With this particular government, they are definitely shifting the policy and shifting the emphasis on the type of migration that they would like to um, continue with and to attract mm -hmm. from overseas. Certainly, the underlying policy is that if people do have a job in Australia to go to, there should be a visa for them. Yeah. Provided, of course, it's, it's a relatively skilled position. Mm -hmm. Low skilled, unskilled, that's not the type of um, visa opportunities that we have in Australia. That's what you would probably refer to as a guest worker program, which yeah. they have in America. We don't have a similar program here other than the working holiday and the work and holiday visa for backpackers. But essentially, I think one of the important messages is to try to have people actually look for work. Yeah. I do understand that a lot of Australian employers are reluctant to employ people unless they already have permanent residency. Yeah. And it's a catch 22. For absolutely. Them, really, and also the recruitment agencies are doing the same. Yeah. Now, that's where something like the MIA and myself certainly um, definitely step up because I'm required to speak to a number of um, stakeholders, organisations. Mm -hmm. I have uh, attendance with government, senior government, etc. And this is a message that we're trying to get across, that the Australian employers must be re-educated, yeah. that it is okay to, to offer employ, yeah. employment opportunities to people that are overseas, to attract them to come here, to offer employment to people that are in Australia on temporary visas. Yeah. So I don't want people overseas to give up hope okay. uh, because we have not closed the doors. The government has definitely not closed the doors. That's good news. <laughs> oh, absolutely. And you know, being an Australian that's been here for quite some time now, we need migrants. And within my work, I have many, many employers that are constantly seeking um, skilled workers from overseas. Yeah. They just can't find Australians to fill their vacancies. Mm, so they need them. So we do need them. And I think that's also something um, interesting that people overseas need to understand that when migration laws change, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's the focus of all Australia 
or of all governments, yeah. it's very political, and which is why immigration laws of Australia change all the time. Mm -hmm. So what we hear today may not necessarily be the case. The law could change dramatically in six months' time or six weeks' time. And that's why we need people like you. Yeah. Yeah. So I think being um, constantly advised, refreshing the information that they know. So if, they, if they've been inquiring a year ago, and they thought they couldn't changed. do anything? Exactly. Yeah. Just don't give up. Keep in contact with somebody such as a migration advisor. Um, there's nothing. If they're overseas, there's nothing at all to prevent them from just a simple email every six months, every six yeah. weeks if they choose Absolutely. to, to say, has anything changed? And I can tell you that most migration advisors would be very happy to just keep them um, abreast of, of everything that's going on. Because the number of times that people in the future do find they've got options yeah. and they thought they'd, they'd, they'd given up gone. hope, they, yeah. they thought those options had gone. It's very, very interesting. And then on the other side, one thing that does frustrate us is when people do have options to migrate yeah. and they don't take them up. And we think, oh my goodness, because if they don't take them up, if they wait three or four or five years, they may change. lose those yeah. opportunities. And the other very interesting point on that is if somebody does apply for permanent residency in particular and it's granted, they're granted a five-year visa. Now that means that they don't have to come in straight away and stay. Right. And I do find this with a lot of people from Europe. They think, oh, will we or won't we? And they're a little reluctant to actually accept um, the fact that they can apply for permanent residency. Mm -hmm. And so they refrain from doing so. And I try to explain that if a visa is granted, permanent residency visa is granted, you have to come in just to validate the visa. And you can go straight, so you can just treat that as a holiday and then go straight back home and, and resume your work. Yeah. And then you've got a five year period to sell up the property, That's right. to resign your position, get the family enrolled in schools yeah. here. Five if you years is a long five time. Five years is a long time to actually yeah. prepare. People that believe that they need to sell up everything and resign the position right. before they've applied for residency or visas, there's no need to do That's that. That's right. We did exactly that. We yeah. came in two weeks before our five years was up. Yep. And you were ready for it then. Yes, that's right. Exactly. And, and I find that that is a really smart way for a lot of people because a lot of people do become very nervous. Yeah. Big move, leaving family and yeah. friends. And so circumstances change and they exactly. certainly did with us and so we came and that's right. now we're loving mm. living in Australia. Yep. And another issue often are the children. That's the children, right. depending on the age. Yeah are reluctant to leave their school and their friends. Yeah. So give them a bit of time, come over, have a few holidays, a few long yeah. extended holidays within that five year period, Absolutely. and then take up the opportunity. Yeah.